Hello, Minglava. In Yanik Lumiare. Happy to be here tonight with all of you. This is my second time to come here to Hartamas MCF, uh, and it's always so happy to be here. Uh, but before uh, I start, I just want to tell a little bit about myself. So you already know that me and my wife are from America. Uh, our state that we come from is called Georgia. Uh, it's Georgia. Okay. So, Georgia uh, it's uh, very far from Utah. Utah. Utah uh, But uh, we have lived here in Malaysia for uh, eight months now. Um, for me, I had the chance to uh, actually stay in Myanmar, in Taunji, uh, in 2018. I, I stayed there just for uh, five months. So uh, But it was while I was there that I fell in love with Myanmar and the people and also the food as well. Um, so that's a little bit about who I am. But tonight we are going to look at Psalms chapter 8. So if you want to turn in your Bibles there. Um, and so, uh, I don't know if you have some friends, sometimes you like, uh, if you're watching a movie or a TV show and you don't want them to spoil what is going to happen if you haven't seen it yet. So if uh, we call that a spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. It means I'm about to tell you what's going to happen. So uh, the spoiler alert look horror, but no, the Zalanga blue shile surago. Yeah, so I'm going to tell you before we even talk about it, the main point of Psalm chapter 8. And so tonight we are going to learn how God created us for a purpose. And that purpose uh, that God created us for is to worship His majestic name in all of the earth. And so, um, before we read Psalms chapter 8, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about the book of Psalms itself. So the book of Psalm is a collection of songs and hymns and prayers from God's people. When we read the Psalms, or I don't know about you, but me, when I read the Psalms, sometimes it seems like, uh, not like a story. It seems kind of sometimes random. This Psalm is about this, and then this Psalm is about something totally different. It can seem random. So, the, the, 
Salan Chango Chiri Akama Bono, Duga, the Kune, the Kumutu Nire, Yago, Tuya Rebono, the Kukumas with the Chilo, Biotare, the Kukumas in Gabialo, Biotare Bono, Bonsan Madure, Ayane, Tuya Rapide. But just like the whole Bible, the Book of Psalm is a unified story and it is written for a purpose to us. So the Kulongo Biamichongo Chimesueno, tomorrow the in the beginning of the book of Psalms in chapter 1 and 2, that is the introduction to the whole book. And in chapter 1, of Psalm, we learn about this blessed man, the blessed man. And this blessed man, he is described as someone who loves God's word. But in chapter 2, he is also described as a king who will bring judgment on those who do not follow God. And so the introduction of Psalm in chapter 2 finishes by saying, those who follow this king, they will be blessed. Who do you think this blessed man, this king is? Who do you think he is? Yeah, Jesus. That's right. So, the book of Psalms opens up telling us that we are going to be talking and learning about Jesus. So then we turn the pages and we keep reading. And in chapters 3 through 7, we read Psalms of David. And he tells us about his struggles. He's running for his life from his enemies. King David, 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 he is great. He is the king of Israel. He's a man after God's own heart, but he is running for his life and he is scared. So, so then we get to Psalm chapter 8, the one that we're going to look at tonight, and we learn about the Lord's majestic name in the earth and our purpose that God created us for. So now, if we can, let's read Psalm chapter 8. It's only nine verses, so we will read the whole chapter. โอ้จนุโดอีพยาชินทาวราพยานามารอดีเมจีตะเปียนลงนายอลุนจีเมตตอมุอีเลญโยดออลุดีหุดอโกรออีโมกองกินโกละกองเปียนเซนดอมุด
ตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัวตัว
They cannot even change their own diaper. So babies are not the picture we have of strength, but David here says that out of the mouths of infants and babies, he's established strength. So to help us understand this, we can actually look in the New Testament because Jesus and Paul, they also talk about this idea of God using children. In Matthew chapter 11, uh, verse 25, uh, Jesus says that God has hidden the things about the kingdom of heaven from the wise and understanding. But Jesus says it is to um, those who are like little children. Those are the ones who have eyes to see and ears to hear and understand about God. So, likewise, in Psalm chapter 8, when David talks about babies, he's talking about those who are like children, who are humble before God and who realize their weakness before God. So those who are humble and who realize that really I have no strength. I'm like a baby in a lot of ways. I cannot save myself. I cannot do it on my own. People whose hearts is like that, that's who God's talking about here. Um, I think it's in John where John says that Jesus must increase and I must decrease. So, uh, the, um, but it's uh, Johan, but not to grab your hand up today, John the baptized, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. So, uh, but it's uh, Johan got to be your ever, no? To the king got to watch in Shibazi, Namu got so you change Shibazi, so that the loan that you will be your up today. So that's who the babies are in Psalm chapter 8. But what does David mean that out of their mouths he's going to establish strength? What does that part mean? So actually, in Matthew chapter 21, Jesus quotes this verse here out of Psalm. Verse 16. Verse 16. Verse so we can read verse 16. 21, 16. That's right. Okay. So Jesus says that he has just entered into Jerusalem the week leading up to his uh, death on the cross. And he went into the temple and he, that was when he was angry and he flipped over the tables. 
So to bring my daughter to win the game, bring my daughter to 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 the game, and he was healing the, the sick. So Emma, But then something interesting happened. The children who were there began to praise and worship God, uh, Jesus for the wonderful things he was doing. So they were giving praise to Jesus and the religious teachers, the Pharisees, they became angry at Jesus. And so then Jesus, in response to the Pharisees, he quotes this verse out of Psalm 8. So Emma Parasheri go to but I don't know if you noticed the it the words are a little different. The verse is not exactly the same. Jesus changed the last part. He said instead of establishing strength, he said, You have prepared praise. So did Jesus just forget Psalm 8 verse 2 and he mis accidentally misquoted the verse? No, that's not what happened. He also isn't changing it, but he's actually helping us to understand the, the real meaning of it. So the praise of the humble and the weak in Christ, that is a stronghold or that is strength. Um, in Psalm 8, David is saying what, because remember, he's, he's running from his life. He has all these enemies. And so he's thinking about what will stop the enemies. And he doesn't say it's putting up his fists and fighting back. He says that offering his praise in humility to God, God takes that and turns it into strength. And friends, Paul says our enemy is not really each other. It's the it's Satan. It's the forces of evil at work in the world. So do you want to know how to punch Satan in the face? Praise God. Offer your praise to God in humility before him. And that is like a punch in the face to Satan. So then we move on to verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 8. So David, he then he looks up, he looks up at the sky and he says, Wow, God, when I look up at all that you have created and all the things that you have made and how wonderful they are, I think. What is man that you even care about him? 
ဟာလူဒီအဘယ်တို့တော့သူဖြည့်ရဲ့ကိုတော်ဒီအောင်းမဲ့တော်မှုရတနီလူသားတွေအဘယ်သို့တော့သူဖြည့်ရဲ့အ
She says 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the brave one. Well, who else? What else do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down. We are, we are doing an awesome job at obeying God's job that he's given, given us. I'll tell you the answer. We have received a big fat F. If it's a test, we received a, an F. F. Like a failing grade. Zero marks. <laughs> Zero, Zero marks, mark. sorry. <laughs> Just, uh, for Adam and Eve, they did well at their job of taking care of God's creation and of worshiping only Him for a very short time. And then they failed, they sinned. And so ever since Adam and Eve sinned, we've all been just like Adam and Eve. So how can we, how then can we live according to this purpose that God created us for? How are we going to do it? The answer is through Christ. The answer is Jesus, the King, the blessed man that we talked about. God gave us a job, we could not do it, but Jesus, He can and He did. So on the one hand, this Psalm chapter 8, it's about how God created us for a purpose. But there's one small thing stopping us from fulfilling that purpose and it's sin. Not really a small thing, right? More like <laughs> so on the other hand then, this psalm is about the greater man, the King Jesus, who could do what we could not do. So when Jesus, when he came to the earth, he did not enter this world as a king. He didn't wear uh, nice clothes and ride into town in a big, uh, like, vehicle. <laughs> when Jesus came into the world, he came as an infant, as a baby. Jesus, he was born into a poor family and uh, he had no beauty or no, um, no majesty that we would think of him as anyone special. And, and we looked at Matthew 21 earlier. I told you that that was when Jesus was riding into Jerusalem. Jesus, the king of the world, he came riding into town on a donkey. Donkeys were considered very, um, not very, uh, if you're very wealthy, you don't ride into town on a donkey. 
the Kid, the Eddie Kit Akama, the Teji, and the people who were there, who were gathered there to welcome Jesus into town, they were not the religious people and the rich, they were the poor and the weak and the sick and the outcasts of society. So, Edima, you should credo, Jalare, Kama, Dugu, Sore, Lugalebe, Parashari, Tenda, Bogori, Adi. They were the ones who realized, who saw about themselves that they needed a savior. They knew there was nothing that they could do to help themselves. And when we approach Christ, when we approach Him uh, at the time of salvation, we realize that about ourselves as well. We realized I cannot do anything to earn my salvation. I am not, uh, I do not deserve salvation, but Jesus, He did it for me. And of course, as you know, Jesus, he was crucified, he died, but then he rose again three days later. And God raised him from the dead and he placed him at his right hand and put all things under his feet, just like it says here in the psalm. And so now for those of us who follow him, who have placed our faith in him, Jesus invites us to share in his power. We share in his power by becoming like him, like a servant. So we we cannot live out God's purpose for us. God's purpose for us, we cannot do it on our own. But when we submit to Jesus, when we follow or surrender to Jesus rather, and follow him, that's when we can live out God's purpose for our lives. And the thing is, is God has made all people, all people with this, with this same purpose. So so now, because of Jesus, we who are followers of Jesus, we are trying to live out this purpose. We are worshiping Him with our lives, and we are um, taking care of His creation. We are trying to do that in the power of Jesus. But there are some, and in fact, there are many who do not worship God, who don't know Him, and who are not living out their purpose that God made them for. So a part of our responsibility of taking care of God's creation is to tell those who don't yet worship God about Him, like what Shelby was talking about. So, um, how can we be a part of living out this purpose? We can 
share with others about their purpose that God has made them for. And we can help them to see and to know this Jesus who can save them from their sins. So, the Lord is saying that 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 the Lord is so we've been talking about God's purpose for our lives, right? So my challenge for you is this. Ask yourself, how are you doing living out God's purpose for your life? Think about, think about your life for a moment. Is when you, when you reflect on and you think about your life, are you living for God's purpose or are you living for, for man's purpose or for your own purpose or for something something else so,ก็ก็เป็นสินทรัพย์อ่ะเอาจนเราจะมาอยากชิ้นสีได้งาพยายามอัตวัดอัตเตชินเนี่ยตูฤพิดตะลาธรรมะมโหโกยะอะโล
we are called to live out our purpose wherever on this earth while we wait for our true home our real home to come so ro jono ro the gain sima ne ein do go ma pyan khian to twin ma tin ne jono ben ma ba shi ni bze ben ni ya ma ba shi ni bze jama ro ye yu ye che adi ka yu ye che ga ro phai ya the khian jama ro ko phan sin tha de yu ye che phit de tu ye achan si do the ma jama ro atat shin bo phit de tu ko sin man swa ko gwe bo ne And so I want to close now by, uh, if you'll just take a few moments of just uh, quietness in your seat, you and and talk to God. So, 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 And ask yourself, how am I doing living out my purpose for God here where He has me? So, 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 Yeah, you haven't been living out your purpose, but it's okay. You can confess that to him and he's ready to forgive you and to help you. So let's just take a few moments and I will uh, close uh, with prayer after a few minutes of just... Silence.